sorry. Uh, yeah, the lecture was interrupted for a while. I mean, for a minute. Anyway, so where was I? So let's say you have, uh, say, alpha. This vertex has a uh, labeled alpha, say, t plus 3. And this has labeled alpha t plus 2. And this has labeled alpha t plus 1. And now you see alpha t. And if alpha t is related to both alpha t plus 1, alpha t plus 2, alpha t plus 3, then because this is at a greater depth, depth so you make a, another, I mean, vertex who's a child of this, and then you add this with the label alpha t. It could be that uh, this also has, uh, this is actually alpha, say, t plus 10, which is same as alpha t plus 3. Still, I mean, this is at the great depth, you add alpha t here. You add a new vertex with alpha t. See that uh, there could be two different vertex with the same label here. <clears throat> it doesn't matter. So now what we want to first claim is that uh, if we have a prefix alpha1 to alpha u of log, then if you consider its corresponding labeled tree, labeled root tree, TU, then it is always a border tree. So of course we, that was our purpose. Our purpose was to correspond the border tree to a log sequence. And this, I mean, definition is a root tree. And we want to check whether that's actually a border tree. <coughs> and we have to check the, the two things these two statements. When we have two vertex, one is child of the other, then they are related. And if two vertex with uh, labels, and their labels are related, then they are at different depths. <coughs> this is indeed true because, I mean, if we have a, you know, vertex with the label beta is created as a child of a vertex with label alpha, then by the construction, we must have alpha and beta related. So first one is OK. And if two vertices at the same depth D as labels alpha and D, alpha and beta, which are related, then out of those two, the one which is which was added later in the process must have been so you have alpha here and then beta here. And when, so assume this was added later, then we want to add this beta. This is depth D. Then, well, how do you add this? You consider all the labels here, which are related to, to beta, and then choose the ones that's farthest from here. In order to add it to here, that means here you have alpha prime, which is also related to beta. But the, uh, compared to alpha prime and alpha, alpha are further away. So you should have actually added here. Or maybe there are other things also related to here. So could, could add it here, depending on how the type can be broken. So that means
That means the one which is added later in the process must have been placed so that it has depth at least t plus 1. No uh, contradiction. Uh, that means they are not, I mean, in the same depth. So this actually shows that the rooted, labeled rooted tree we obtain is indeed a modal tree. <coughs> <coughs> and now what we want to show is that uh, for, I mean, if you have a practice, So we are keep talking about prefix of a log. So what we want to do is for each time here, for each prefix, so this is a prefix, this is a prefix, this is a prefix, this is a prefix. For each prefix, we want to consider modal tree. So this actually gives us a sequence of modal tree. So that's why we are keep talking about prefix of log. And if you have a u is before b, then we want to show that the modal tree tu and tb are not equal. <coughs> so by Considering the sequence of modal tree coming from each prefix of this log, we want to later bound the I mean probability of getting specific log with uh, length at least something. And for that, I mean we want to show that uh, for I mean each prefix we get the uh, modal tree, but all those are different. So suppose TU and TB are same, then we have uh, those must have the same label. The so modal tree is, I mean, equal means that uh, you, they have the same labeling as well. Then what happens is for all J, which is between 1 and U, all alpha J in TU must also P in TV. But uh, TV has an additional vertex. Alpha V. Hence, we have that TV has a more vertex than TU. So here, why this is true is that if you consider this modal sequence, you consider here and then consider the first one, which is in TU but not in TV. Then, that means that the, all the vertices in TU in here are in TV as well. But uh, depending on whether this is in TU or this is in TV, are actually determined based on, <coughs> based on whether there are some other, I mean, previously added vertex with a label related to this. If this is in 
TU, that means out of this, at least one of them is related to alpha, this alpha J. That's why you create a new vertex with uh, this label in TU. But if this is not in TV, it's contradiction because these are already in TV. So this has already added vertex in TV, which is related to alpha J. So you must have uh, created a vertex with the label alpha J in TV. So we prove this. Here you might consider that, uh, I mean, for this, I mean, while you are considering U alpha B and while you are considering alpha U, sometimes you have to break the ties. So here you have alpha, beta. Now you want to add amma, ar gamma, vertex with the label gamma, but you could add in this way or you could end it in this way, when gamma is related to both alpha and beta. So that, I mean, so in one step you break tie in certain way, the other step you break tie in other way, then it might not be consistent, you might worry, but uh, still it's okay because in that case, again, they are not equal. So this statement is that, uh, I mean, however you break ties, if you have a two prefix with a different length, then they just produce a two different modal tree. Uh, but uh, if this, I mean, confuse you a bit more, then you might just think that uh, here, the breaking tie, you can give some rule. <coughs> so you consider the, I mean, the unordering of the all labels in I, and according to that ordering, you break the tie, then, I mean, it's, it might be less confusing to you. Anyway, so now what we want to do is we want to compute the expectation of T log, the expected length of the log sequence. <coughs> and we want to show that this is not big. Then we apply Markov to show that this is not big with high priority. But what's this is you add the priority that this has length at least n or n at least 1. So these two are actually same. Because if t log is exactly, so this is the summation of i times priority that t log is i. But uh, this sum, sum, this is same as summation of i equal one to, I mean, i is at least one, two, give me a moment, uh, how do I explain it in a simple way? I mean, maybe pic pictorial way is better. So this is summation of i times probability that t log is i. That means you add the probability that t log is 1. You add the probability that t log is 2 plus probability that t log is 2. And this is 3, 3, 3 and so on. And if you add all the this column together, then that's probability that the t log is at least 1. And here is probability of t log at least 2. Here probability of t log at least 3. And you add them together, then you get the right hand side. So these two are actually same.
and again this is same as if you consider all the modal tree and you consider the probability that the this t actually <coughs> I mean tn if tn is defined so t log is at least n is same as tn is defined when tn is defined then tn must be one of the modal tree so if you consider this probability and add together then that's the probability that tn is defined and when tn is defined that's same as the t log at least n so this is the probability And we want to bound this, but uh, how we want to do it is uh, we want to define some because I mean, so this is summation over all modal tree. So we need to estimate the number of modal tree, or I mean, from modal tree we have to compute this. But uh, it's a bit more tricky. So we consider something called wing modal tree, and then we want to bound upper bound this somehow. So we want to replace this with a slightly larger number because and we want to bound this instead so for that we need to define this wing model tree so a rooted tree with vertex labels in i is a wing modal tree if the following holds so if you is a vertex with label alpha and if this is a child of b with label beta then they are related. So this is same as the uh, modal tree. But the uh, second one is a bit different. Second one for the modal tree is that uh, <coughs> to related, I mean, the vertices with the related labels are at the different depth. But here, labels of the children of a vertex are all distinct. So if we have a modal tree, then of course, this is alpha, this is beta. If there are another beta here, then these two are have a related label with the same depth. So that's a contradiction. So if you have a weak modal tree, the second condition holds. That means modal tree is a weak modal tree. So now we want to, what we want to do is we want to bound this to with uh, say PT. So remember PT was defined before on a, where, uh, give me a moment. Uh, yeah. Give me a moment. Let's actually define this for more general concept for a labeled. Put it three. We define this. So, what we want to do here <coughs> is that uh, we want to show that for modal tree, this is upper bound of this, and for non modal tree, big modal tree, this is additional term. So, we want to later show, claim that this holds. 
For that, we need to first show that if you have a model tree T, then we have that the probability that this is same with some Tn is at most P of T. So in a log, you, I mean, in the modal fixed algorithm, you produce a log. And for this log, you consider the con corresponding modal tree. If T occurs in some prefix of the log, then, I mean, the pr probability of such event is at most P of T. That's what this lemma claim. So, remember this C of V is an independent random variable. And we want to consider several, I mean, identically distributed random variable. So each of these are random variable which is same as C O V, but uh, they are mutually independent. So it means that uh, you can consider that uh, you have a fair coin. Coin, you toss you get a head or tail, right? But uh, in our algorithm, you might have to flip a coin several times. You have to flip a several, same coin several times. <coughs> but uh, you might as well consider that uh, there are several same coin, but uh, you, you flip a first coin, and then second coin, and third coin at, uh, at each round. It might be more con I mean, convenient to actually consider it that way it's more convenient to phrase it. I mean, it's essentially the same. You can just flip the same coin several times or different coin one, once in, at each time. But uh, for convenience of writing, let's just consider this. These, have the, these are the random variable which has the same distribution, but uh, we assume that uh, they are independent of each other. at the beginning of Wojar's fixed algorithm. We use CB0 and later if we resample CV after say we use CB0 to CBT, then we use CBT plus 1. So alpha 1 to alpha U be the log and it has Model tree T. Model tree T is associated with this prefix of the log. <coughs> so remember, by our definition, if some of the alpha B here is not related to anything later, then we just ignore this. But it, but at that case, if you consider this prefix, then you get a new. I mean, modal tree, which starts from alpha B. So, I mean, so if you consider the modal tree for this or modal tree for this, the formal one does not ha necessarily have to be the sub tree of the latter one. Anyway, so those are, I mean, not really relative to T. So we just delete them some unused labels. So this is just, uh, we just forget them for our analysis. We just assume that T has exactly U vertices.
and let W1, W2, WU be the corresponding vertices. With WI being labeled R5. So now, I mean, yeah, to be more rigorous, let's say for each I and V, let FI V be the number of times that This is actually the number of times it has been reshuffled so far, minus 1. So, for example, if you have, I mean, this bad event, and here, let's say this is B. So, at first, it's reshuffled, so we use CB0. And now this is the first bad event that we chose. Then we reshuffle. So this, I mean U W, C U one, C W one. We reshuffle using these three. And then now we want to reshuffle this. Then what do we use? C V two, X Y, C x1, c, y1. But we want to indicate this number. So far, how many times have we reached up v? Twice. So this actually give us 1, 2, 3. So j is at most i. So 3 and we subtract 1, so that's 2. So, so far we have I mean, reshuffle twice and then the index starts from zero. So now it indicates that the two is the, I mean, right index here. So that's why we define this. Then for this to happen, meaning that uh, we get the T as uh, our model tree at nth time, It is necessary that bad events for alpha t holds for all t. Because, I mean, yeah, once you reach up with this, and then you have alpha 2 and alpha 3. So for it to happen, alpha 1, bad event alpha 1 and bad event alpha 2, and bad event alpha 3, all has to happen. And probability that bad event at alpha t happens, assuming all the bad event alpha t prime with the t prime smaller than t, this, I mean, this event actually depending on c o v f phi v for all v inside of, I mean, this events relative to alpha t. So, let's write it this way. As all c, v, i are mutually independent, We know that probability of bad event alpha t is p alpha t and 
and also I mean this is same <coughs> because all this I mean random variable which is related to here and all the random variable related to here are mutually dependent then what do we know and what's the priority that this happen all the bad, bad event happen which is actually I mean an upper bound on So, to estimate this, you multiply the conditional expect conditional probability. And that's same as PT. So this shows that the probability that the, we get this T in some for some prefix of the modal tree is bounded by this PT. Now we are ready to actually prove uh, an upper bound on the expected number, expected t log. We will do that in next video.